So how can we go about solving equations that have exponential expressions in them? Something like this one, right? Well, there's two methods, uh, th there's two situations that come up. One, one case is the one we have here where the bases are the same, right? In this case, they're both five. Uh, and that's the case we're gonna talk about in this lecture. Then in the next lecture, we'll look at the other case uh, where the bases are different. So there's kind of two approaches to solving this same base scenario. And, and I want to talk about both of them. One of them is a little informal, but it's the one you often see uh, in pre-calculus class. It's class where we're talking about exponential and logarithmic equations. Uh, because in those classes, you often haven't talked about logarithms at this point, uh, which means you don't have them in, in your toolbox. All right, so the, the way these equations where the bases are the same is usually approached at this point uh, in a pre-calculus kind of class. is you're saying, look, if the bases are, same, are the same, then the exponents have to be the same. All right, so the bases are both the same here, which means the exponents have to be the same, and the solution is x equals 2. All right, and, and that's fine. At, the, at this point in, in your class, you know, that's a perfectly reasonable approach uh, because it is a valid statement. But uh, the more proper way to do this uh, is actually to take the logarithm of both sides. All right, so if I take, and it really doesn't matter which base you use for this. So if I just do the log of 5 to the x equals the log of 5 squared, then my next step here is going to be to use uh, the logarithm property that says the log base A of x to the m is equal to m times the log base A of x. In other words, I can take this exponent and bring it out in front. Right, so if I do that on the left side, this becomes x times the log of 5. And if I do it on the right side, it becomes 2 times the log of 5. Well, the log of 5 is just a number. It's a weird decimal number, but it's still just a number. So I can divide both sides by it, right? If I divide both sides of this by the log of 5, a whole lot of canceling happens, and all that's left is x equals 2. So we get the same answer either way, right? One, one is a little more formal, a little more technically correct. The other one is quicker, all right? Okay, so let, let's look at another example. Take a look at this one here. All right, it doesn't, at first glance, look like the bases are the same. Right? One is 4 and 1 is 8, and those aren't equal to each other. But before you throw up your hand say there, I, we can't do this and move on to the next question, um, you, you gotta, can I make them the same? Because one thing that stands out to me is that 4 and 8 are both powers of 2. All right, so if I rewrite this 4 as 2 squared, and I rewrite the 8 as 2 to the third, okay, now their bases are the same. Now I can apply my, my rule here and say 2 to the x plus 1 equals 3 to the 2 minus x. And now it's just a little linear equation. Distribute on both sides. 2x plus 2 equals 6 minus 3x. We'll add the 3x to both sides. 5x plus 2 equals 6, subtract 2, we get 5x equals 4, and then divide by 5. x equals 4 fifths, and there's our answer. Uh, and you, you remember when we talked about logarithmic equations, there was that last really important step where you had to check to see if you, you ended up with an extraneous solution. You had to go back and check your answer to make sure it didn't make the things you were taking the logarithms of negative. That's not a concern here. While it is, of course, still absolutely a good idea to check your answer, uh, you shouldn't come up with a situation where you have an extraneous one that you have to throw away. All right, and the reason for that is that the domain of the exponential functions uh, is all real numbers. So there are no numbers uh, that are potentially problematic. All right, so how about this one? All right, well, th this one actually does fit the mold, right? 9 and 127s, so those are both powers of 3, All right? 9, 9 is kind of the obvious one. 9 is 3 squared. So this is 3 to the 2 times 1 minus x. Now, how about this right-hand side? Tw 27 I get, right? 27 is 3 to the 3rd. Okay, fine. But 
how do we do 1 27th? Well, I can, I can rewrite this using a negative exponent. Right, I'm going to make this 3 to the negative third times 2x. Now, again, I've made both bases the same. Right, so let's see. So now my exponents are equal. 2 times 1 minus x equals negative 3 times 2x. And now we're back to just a simple linear equation. 2 minus 2x equals minus 6x. Let's add 2x to both sides. We get 2 is equal to negative 4x. Divide both sides by negative 4 and reduce that fraction over there. And we get x equals negative 1 half. And there you go. All right, so we, we were still able to put this into that form uh, that we know how to work with here. All right, so there's one more lecture in, in this series on solving logarithmic and exponential equations. Uh, and that's going to cover the case where the bases are not the same.